Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and welcome to day 13 of Acrylic April. Wow, you are amazing. You're incredible to still be in it. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He is going to be keeping me company while I paint this in. You may have just figured out that I am at Pinners. <laughs> we wanted to make sure that um, I held myself accountable and you guys accountable, so we've got the video here waiting for you. Hey. While we're mentioning that, we're going to be at another Pinners not too soon, huh? That's right. We're going to also, well, we're going to be at Hot Springs, Arkansas. That's right. We're going to be Hot Springs last weekend of, in April. In Art in the Park. And Art's then the park. Uh, we're going to be at Minnesota Pinners. So yep. if you'd like to come out and see us, that would be a great time to do it. it and if you're here for not Acrylic April, you're still welcome to paint the lips. <laughs> now, if you're here sometime in like October, you should go back and check out those events. There's probably a link in the description down below. They were a lot of fun. Yeah. You should maybe show up next year. There's a lot of them, so they're really cool. <laughs> All right, that was our weird little public service announcement, but I'm ready to jump on this. I'm going to show you step by step how you can create these fun lips in a loose, expressive style using acrylic paint. Uh, if you're here for part of the daily painting, love. But if you just came by to paint lips, also love. So let's just hop right on in. All right. So I have my canvas kind of prepped with a darker peach value skin tone. If you want to see how to make that, you just click the link below, check out the description below, click the link to the web page, it'll tell you materials, it'll tell you exchanges, and there's two extra videos and they will show you about the color mixes and how we got here. So they're really excellent to watch. And there's traceable and there's value studies and all these extra supplements. And they're mm -hmm. all free for you guys to use anytime. I feel so weird. It's like, it's like when we're in here by ourselves. <laughs> we're all alone, except for everyone who's watching us right, right now. now. It's like, it's like being in time war. So you'll see some labels on my palette, but right now what I have out is CAD, yellow, medium hue. I have vermilion. I have deep magenta. I have titanium, white, Mars, black, burnt sienna, a titch of thalo grain, mostly because I think I might need it for the gold values and some ultramarine so I can get those lips uh, as dark right as I can with my limited palette. So let's start out in this outer area for the skin tones. And what I'm gonna do on the skin tones is a little bit of my uh, red to my magenta. I like to mix those together in a mid range. We're gonna actually be doing that mix quite a lot here. So I may pull a bunch of it out <laughs> because I know I'm gonna use this as a base for even inside my lips to help start take it to a deeper red. Now, skin tones are generally a peach right that we lighten up so i've got to get myself to that peachy tone you can start out with a coral that's pretty good getting there i've got my naples so i can even yellow it from there like lighten it in that way and when you get a nice mix of it going it can be nice to take a little of your burnt sienna into it to neutralize it and make it seem more real more human and this, this applies to fair skin values. If you want to know more about different skin tones, I have a lot of videos on that. And you can just search the website um, about how to make different skin tones and you're going to find a huge number of resources. And there's always a book at the bottom of my description that I highly recommend for that as well. So, yeah, we cover quite a few of those different yeah. skin tones. Yeah, it's a question we answer a lot and I like to have a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. So I've got my base skin value right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come add some white to it. You can see I'm getting a very light value. And I will come up here and I'm going to try to make this space, which is much lighter. I'm going to try to paint it loosely. I'm going to try to be as loose as I can with this. It gets a little challenging for me sometimes. Add a little of my Naples yellow into that because it's real easy especially with skin values to really feel like oh i've gotta i've gotta really bring it right hmm. and so you can get a little bit lost in that i'm adding both naples and a little white here because i want to lighten this as we come up over the lip and i may even bring some of that lightness down see how we go just come in here blending it around if you've been really kind of thinking about skin values and what that takes this is a kind of fun video to get into that yeah i'm coming along here last some of my last some of my lips Did my you? lovely lush lips 
and I don't want to lose them. I worked pretty hard to grid them in. <laughs> I love the navels because it gives a nice warmth to everything and also lightens. Now underneath here, as we come down, it's very interesting. We're going to make our skin value that we like, but we're going to add a bit of our black to it. And we're going to be pretty, well, we were supposed to be pretty <laughs> careful about that. Yeah. <laughs> and get a little bit away from us adding my naples and you can see what I'm doing is I'm creating that shadow see beautiful I know come here and try to talk a little bit about the shadow that we've got on this side of the lips because the lips will pull out from even this flat canvas only based on the shading that we give them so it's important to capture those different transitions I'm taking my base skin mixture and every once in a while I'm just putting some Naples into it just to warm it. Coming around here. And so some of these are a little bit darker, but right here, interestingly enough, it gets a lot lighter kind of at the bottom. So I'm going to get my yellow and my white into that and see it's quite a light value right here. Mm -hmm. And so we're just trying to you know, talk about those. Now I use. I'm going to use very softly. You can see I'm just kind of going back and forth and I'm very nicely blending my wet paint into my wet paint and that helps me get that value and then I can keep coming forward because again, quite light. So I don't want to skip that if it's important. There. Get that lighter value. There's definitely one right here. That we have. And even up here, I see that coming down. You guys kind of see how that's happening there? Yeah. So it's, you know, just going through these and playing with the mixes and finding what works. And then getting a nice little blend going. I may turn this upside down so that I don't bend my body. All right? to bend, uh, uh, to get to a place on the canvas. So I'm gonna come bring this over here with a little bit of white, making that base skin tone, and then add a little bit of black into it for the shadow. I'm gonna just try to see what the shadow's doing and paint that as, to the best of my ability under here. Where does it go and how does it go? I think it's going to be super important. Got that right there. And it comes around a bit around here, right? But not too much. There we go. We got some little shading on those little lips. I'm going to take a clean brush for the paint dry. I'm going to just lightly blend that if I can. It's definitely a challenging area. Not poppy challenging, but challenging. Hmm. <laughs> uh, up here, there's also quite a lot of light up here and I don't want to lose that. So talk about that a bit. Now in the mouth, we're going to get back into that CAD uh, of that vermilion and that magenta. Stronger into the magenta if we can. Because we really have to come up with some dark values to some bright values on our lips. And I think that this is going to be about a bit of some layering. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine into that mix of those two. And I'm going to try to get it into a much deeper, almost wine making. Underneath the lips, right here, you would have that. White dark here. So this is layer one. I like ready player player one. This is <laughs> ready layer one. And we're gonna try to put this darker, cooler value where we feel 
where we see our little lip shadows. So hopefully we learn some tricks from our poppies. Now that we're back to the red on red mixes, right? Yeah. Hopefully we we picked up a thing or two. I'm gonna come right here. And I'm gonna well that's a little bit redder than I want, so I definitely think I've got to get back into the mix of the two of them. Because this is more of a deep crimson. And we have a magenta in our mix instead of a deep crimson. So how do we get that effect of crimson? I get asked that a lot, like, what's the what's what can I substitute? <laughs> how can I get that if I don't have those exact colors? Now, keep bear in mind, the reason artists use specific paints and pigments is because, you know, it's more challenging to work from a limited palette and still get the depth and effect that you're wanting to get, right? Yeah. Doesn't mean we don't still need to do it. So I'm going to come down here at the bottom and again, let's get into the blue and that helps make a very dark color, which we'll like as it builds up. It'll get very berry on us as we go. And I'm going to bring, trying to get this, all of this lip part painted in as much as I can. I like the lips. Fun to paint some lips. And I painted a few lips, haven't I, John? Yeah, you have. There's been just a lot of lips on the channel. Drip lips, Rocky Horror Picture Show lips. You have to wonder, what are we thinking? Yeah. We're thinking we like lips, I guess. That's probably what I'm thinking as an artist, is I find them to be an enjoyable and entertaining uh, paint subject. Yeah. And so does our community. Because they, they paint their lips. Well, I think everybody has them, generally speaking. And... Most of us, I think, enjoy kissing them. So that's probably <laughs> that's a good a step, <laughs> right? That's such a boy thing to say. True, but still a boy thing to say. Well, I have been one my entire life. Got to do what you got to do, man. <laughs> you got to do you. <laughs> if there's another way of being, I don't know how. But you know what? In all fairness, you never screamed, ooh, chintz. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know to each his own <laughs> so i'm gonna come here and uh, you know on this maybe part of the lip i'll bring this up that's the flowery stuff yes okay that repeated flower pattern right see right there i just want to make sure clearly I knew what talking about. no familiarity i'm gonna bring this kind of uh mix of the vermilion and the magenta through here and I'm sure the drips, I'm really going to have to do some interesting stuff to get them. I'm actually fascinated about how, how are we going to solve the challenge of getting that gold effect without, you know, a pretty expanded palette. But already, we got some red lips and they have some values. Now, underneath here... I'm going to take just a small amount of this because, and maybe put a little, come over here and I'm going to put a little black to it. But not so much. I just want to, ooh, that's nice. That'll work really well in our upper look. Just talk a little bit about the gums that are peaked down under the lip. Hmm. Just so we have them. Talked about them a little bit. Right here. I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine and my black. I'm going to deepen them up. It'll be interesting. And I'm going to come underneath and make sure that I'm showing that dark value right there. Yeah. I thought I might bring it up here. Okay, it's here and it's nice and dark and it will help me with some of those darker values. Look at that. But because I put the blue in it, it doesn't have the deadening effect that maybe I don't want to take that deepest value too far. 
because that's supposed to be our, you know, deep, deep value. All right, when I have that, the mix of the two, the black and the ultramarine, teeth. Mm. All right. From here. Let's do the chiclets. And we talked about this when we were gritting, like, man, these teeth are big. But that's what they are. Yeah. And so what are you going to do? And I, what I'm capturing right here is the fact that unless you've been to the dentist and had them really, really whitened, they're bones. Yeah. And they haven't really had a chance to be bleached by the sun yet, guys. Yeah, well, you know. If you're in Southern California and you spend a lot of time on the beach, maybe. Maybe. Now, I'm going to bring just one more value of dark to that. It's going to come right underneath here. Can you guys see that? Just one more. Right underneath. Maybe even in the corner here. Rinsing out. Now I'm going to grab a lot more white, but it won't be pure, pure white. Paint that in. First little transition of tooth. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it is. I don't know. I find it kind of fascinating. Like, it's going to get a slightly lighter, but darker than that tooth version right here. And I'll definitely have to make sure that I put that slightly darker value between those two back into the lighter. Um, back into a slightly darker, but still lighter than the shadow version. See, there's a lot of shading. <sighs> like a lot. Now I'm going to rinse this out. And I'm going to go ahead and again, it's the ultramarine, right? Got a lot of the ultramarine with some black. So I'm going to make a of darker gray let's just talk about that right there and what's important to remember is that like this one kind of curls up see how we're getting that little value this one as well We'll deepen that as we need to. I think it's really fascinating to do the teeth. Yeah. Do the teeth, do the teeth. All right. So I'm going to wipe my brush off. All right. Capture some of. This right here. Spend a lot of time on your chiclets, guys. The chiclets, they're the <laughs> basis of the chomping. They they do they do some important stuff, don't they? They are the structure behind your smile. That is super true. Like cannot be underestimated, I don't think. I'm liking that. That's not terrible. Let that have a little bit of a dry and a think. It needs to think about what it's done. Yeah? Yeah, no, I don't know. I'm going to come right here with just a little kiss of pink. So that's coming in really quickly. It should. You're only at 20 minutes. Am I? Yeah. I'm doing good, yeah, man. You're doing really good. So I've got the mix between the vermilion and 
really what I found was this black and blue came in and they did a really good job of deepening that to a deep berry, didn't they? Yeah. So I'm going to go with it. Deepen that to a deep berry. Deep, 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 deep. Deep, 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 loading that up. So that's the blue and the black. Load it up. Come over to that mix. Just, I'm curving up my brush strokes here. I'll take that shadow all the way out. Don't forget, we've got to do, there's this weird little lip that's just a little bit lighter than the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to have that there. And then as I come around to the side, this all darkens up a bit. So we're darkening to right here. How are we doing? That's pretty dark. Now we have some of this depth also in our lower lip. So I'm going to load up with the blue and the black into this mix here that I had. There's the vermilion and the magenta with my blue black. So what do we got going on here? So right here, it comes down. And you've got to remember that there's light, bright red areas, and that's what's going to make the lip feel pouty and red. I think maybe one of the reasons that uh, we've had some... Uh, people have some real success with lips on the channel is that there's so much about makeup now out there. Mm. So people spend a lot of time looking at what shapes a lip. Just in general. Yep. And have had a chance to kind of think about that. I'm going to add a little water in my brush, but not too much because I don't want it to get soppy and transparent. Just gonna come along here, just underneath. And while darker, I don't feel like we're quite dark enough down here yet. I think we are right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little more of my blue and a little more of my black together on a brush. There we go, and get that deep berry, deep dark color right here. Look at that. We're getting there. Yeah. I'm going to pull that. That came up a little too far. Now, while I'm here, because the teeth are had to dry, I'm going to come back underneath and darken that little shadow there. That's an important deep value. I think when this comes in, it's going to come in super fast. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to start my gold with a little black and a little brown, I think. Maybe I'll add a little yellow to it. Not sure if I'm going to need a little green. But down here, and you can see it's kind of a really dark brown color, and you're like, how does that become gold? <laughs> you're going to be like, wait, what? I think we're going to be able to get a very metallic look going here. Uh, dark value right there. And I'm going to pull this sort of down. And I think we've got some coming down here. And just where the gold would be dripping. And I'm going to even come in and get even a little more. Look at that. Make that as dark as you can. Little spot over here that's pretty dark. And another one over here. Now I'm going to take my vermilion and my magenta and I'm going to mix them together again. And just a smidge, just the smallest amount of my uh, ultramarine to deepen it. A 
come along here. Just letting that fill in. And you can see how even though our, our vermilion is a little transparent, it's glazing very beautifully. And what I'll tell you is in all paints, mm -hmm. lean into their properties. What do you mean? I what? mean like, so, you know, myself and other teachers will talk and say, okay, well, you know, these paints are very transparent. Right? And we might be recommending perhaps because of that another paint, but say you're painting with a very transparent paint, then treat it like a glaze. Mm. If you understand it's a glaze, then treat it like a glaze. So just use it to its best properties. Right. We're always yeah. using our, our, our stuff to its best properties. And as long as we do that, we will be brilliant. Right up to the edge there. I'm just trying to make sure it's nice. Seamless face over a million and right there. All right. I think we're building it up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm actually kind of okay. I'm loving it. I'm just, I'm not trying to take out what I've already done. I'm just layering, guys. Doing some blendiness. Yeah, but by, you know, kind of glazing and layering so that each level is building up to the next level. I mean, I won't have to go back and put another devalue in. I may to get the big transitions. It depends on how it all reads. Now, I'm going to get kind of crazy. And I'm going to come up here and blend over the top just a little of my vermilion. Can you see how I'm dragging that down? Mm-hmm. That's going to read really, really well in the finished painting. I'm going to come here and flip this over. If I need to put out some more vermilion, I will. Right here. I'm going to just make sure the places where it would be a little bit brighter, it shows as brighter. And always get right in your magenta and come along this edge here. Just keep working it. But not overworking it because we're trying to be a little bit looser. And maybe this is not as loose as I'd like to be yet, but uh, for me, it's like a lot better. <laughs> it's pretty loose. It's getting there. Getting you know, there. Yeah, for, for your lips it is. For what I do, yeah, it really is a lot looser than what I normally do. All right. Let's get really into this pigment right here. That's my red, right guys? Yeah. So your red's your red. You got to lean into what you got. Got to make it work, as Tim Gunn would say. Do you now? I think it's a good idea, but you know. You're painting. <laughs> All right. Pretty good? Yeah. We've got some shading. We got some skin tones. We have not failed at this. Mm -mm. Don't put me on. All right. So while all that's having a dry, right, I'm going to come back with another little sort of just slightly lighter off white. Okay. Maybe like right here at this tip. Okay. Not my lightest white, but just lighter. And catch those bits of highlight, if you can see that. And then I'm going to take a little of my Naples and a lot of my white. Just warming the white with the Naples. Like it's a light that's reflecting, right? And I'm going to come here. One right there. Wow, that really pops it out a lot. Doesn't it? Yeah. Gives it some I got teeths. Yeah. There we go. We got some teeths. 
This red all really needs to have a dry and this brown does too. So just to be sure it's all dry, I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer real quick and then we'll finish this up real fast. Okay. There. And yeah. So don't forget, check out the link in the description down below for information on this and all of the other projects we're doing. Make sure you use your air mover on the lowest heat setting just so it doesn't overheat. And thank you, for, as always, for coming and hanging out with us because without you guys watching, whether it's now or now or now or later, we just couldn't do this without you guys. So thank you for coming and joining us. Yay! I'm going to get my number. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get my number four round. I need a little control, yo. And I'm going to try to think about my gold color. So my gold color is going to be a lot of my yellow. Smidged with a little brown, right? I may even get just this. Just the, I know that seems crazy, but there's actually to my eye, there's always a smidge of green and gold. Yeah, I can see that. I, I, I see that myself. Do you? Yeah. So I'll use that as that next value up. And I got to tell you guys, it's an act of subtlety. So, you know, if you've got to come and get a little more yellow into it, you know, know that that's okay. I'm going to begin... bottom here. I may actually even turn that into more of a pink reflection. I'm going to come here and there. And I think actually it's even deeper than this. So let's add a little, do you know what I'm saying? Yep. Black's another way to go because sometimes when you mix black and yellow together, they make green. There we go. Uh, that depends on the chromatic undertone of the black, right? Yeah, it does. The bias. Ooh, look at me. I'm learning. <laughs> yes, you are. Seriously. I'm just, I'll come back and get some deeper values, but you can see that the brown is, is helping. And this is going to be uh, some works in some shading. Going to require a lot of love. A lot of love to get through this. So like for a lot of people, they might've been like, Oh no teeth. And I was like, Oh no, gold drips. <laughs> <laughs> Let's work now. I'm going to come right here. But if you remember that metal is super reflective, that it has really strong shadows and highlights and you just mimic those you can pretty much do whatever you need to do so again i'm going to go here with the yellow and a bit of the brown but this time i'll get some of the vermilion See i'm doing mm -hmm. and i'll warm that up And if you ever need a light, remember you've got that Naples, which is a really powerful tool. So find little spots that are supposed to have a reflection and start talking about those. It's a tapping motion. There's a bit of a highlight right here. Another one right there. And I'm going to just hang in until I have this because this has become like this thing where I'm like, I'm doing it. Well, you're pretty good. You're 34 minutes. So, I mean, like, it's, you're not even. Oh, no, I'll be, I'll be done pretty quick. And quicker than you might expect. Oh, I know. I look away and then all of a sudden we're done. And I'm like, whoa, you're leaving, you're switching screens. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Get some. So you can see we're getting some of that kind of going back into a little bit of the black brown mix and our yellow, but we want it to be pretty dark. Right here. And what I'm trying to do is exaggerate 
those dark values. And then I'll be exaggerating the light values. And if I do it somehow remotely right at all, I should at some point have some gold looking something. They're looking pretty gold. Eh, I'll be honest. Eh. All right, They're, yellow. No, they, I know how as the as the highlights start to come in more and more and more, I just know how this is going to go. Yeah. But it's it's good to be like, eh. I've been here a minute. You've been here a minute? All right. So what you're seeing me mix is my brown, my vermilion, and my yellow. And I'm just trying to get the very many. Like, see how that's warm now? Mm -hmm. And try to get the many, many crazy little colors. That is cool. And then I truly do imagine that where this will somehow come together is in the highlights or hopefully in the highlights. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. If not, we made our best shot, right? That's turned out pretty good so far. I'm going to take my cad yellow and my Naples together. Make the nice mid range. That's a few little. few little bits of something here and there. Not the final bits. Believe it or not, there's one last layer in this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's just, there may be more if I can't get it. You just hang in until you got it. It's here. Just trying to make sure that I catch. My value, because if I can catch my value, eventually I can, I can get there. I think. What if it escapes? What if it escapes? Yeah, lesson learned. <laughs> Just taking some pure brown. You're like meh, I'll get you tomorrow. I don't want it to look like mustard's coming out. <laughs> 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 but I mean, listen, if it does, here's what you do: just go with it. You're like, no, I meant that. Yep. Somebody's like, you know, that's like all mustard, right? And you'd be like, yeah, I know. It's very hard to get. Worked at it for hours. It's it's National Hot Dog Month, dude. Yeah, it's a feature, not a fault. Yeah, so come on. I'm taking a little of my Naples yellow into this, so you can see it's quite. Uh, it's it's a yellow kind of white. Right here, there's definitely a hot spot there. And through this, isn't there? There we go. For me, that's good. Yeah, that's looking good. So that'll be like catching the little spots. I had to get into a rush, right? That's what you do is you can get into a rush. You can lose it. You just got to do what you can do. But the trick of this is to find things in a quicker manner, right? That's like why we started it. There's lots of interesting little sparkling highlights. Through there. I think it's good. Oh, see, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes in these things, I'll be like doing them and I'm like, man, I'm super worried here. And then all of a sudden. It finds yeah. itself. Yep. And it starts to speak. My language it gives me a bit of my sandwich. Hey, my Australian friends. <laughs> All right. Look at that. I think it's looking good. We got some gold going. I'm going to make sure that my hot spots are hot enough. All right. I feel like. Pretty good. Yeah. I think that's turned out really nice. Again with the white into this kind of like Naples yellow on my small brush. And then uh, I'm going to just tap a little reflection coming back. Uh, and then it kind of comes along here along the top of the lip. Uh, 
pick up some of these little reflections as I see them. You just got to catch what you can see. There we go. Like you do. A little bit there in the corner. It's turning out so nice. You have a little moment? Yeah. Has a little moment. It has that magic moment. Something so new. <laughs> We're just applying things. You know, if we want to slow down and just get every little thing, we can. Yeah. But we don't need to because we're painting loosely. And that's kind of what loosely means is to just get the emotional. Get the important bits. Yeah. All right. Capture a little. I find it sometimes helpful on things that are implied to be wet to get some highlights because they help. They help. Yeah. It's looking so nice. It has it has some has some features, I feel. It does. Some features. Now uh, I feel like I gotta do something. Oh, all right. I'm going to do one more thing and then I'm going to say we've, you know, I've gotten in it. I feel like I've learned my lesson. Hopefully you guys have found your, I'm adding just bright, bright white to the gold, okay. which should cause it to stand out. It really does. It pops it out a lot. You know, into the space. Like right there in that reflection, maybe there on this hot spot right here. There's another hot spot right there. I'm just trying to capture a couple of the hot spots. Mm. Man, that so changed that. Now, I suspect, right before I go, if I come back in with a little bit of this dark value in my black. And I exaggerate just some of what I got. That might pop a few things, too. I'm going to call it. I'm going to sign it. That's really great. I'm happy. Hopefully they're happy. All right. So I'm taking water and I'm kind of mixing it into my paint to make it more fluid so that I can come over here and sign. Day 13. Mm -hmm. Woo. We got through it. We did. This was one that I was worried about. But I'm actually... Pretty darn happy with the result. Yeah. Can you tell us a mouth with some gold drips? I hope so. And I hope you're enjoying your own process. I hope you're learning skills you didn't know that you could develop. I hope you're starting to see more every day and you're going, wow, like this creativity, it's in me. If I lean into it, it'll happen for me. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. John's going to show you tomorrow's video and I hope you'll join us. I want to see you at the easel real soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.